Do you have a header or a thumbnail or some other graphic element that you have to revise every month or every week even? Me too. Once a week, I write a newsletter to go with these videos, and I begin each newsletter with a graphic. Used to be really simple. What I call the seal of deke. A couple of lines, a few circles, a zigzag shape, a bunch of spokes, some type on a path, and of course, a seal. But frankly, even with some color, that got old fast. So I started to experiment. Little things like play with the orientation, integrate a dramatic action-packed sample photo. One week I gave the artwork some dimension. Another week I added a bunch of crazy layered gradients along with some festive snow. This one week I apparently had too much time on my hands so I hand drew the artwork in fresco. Now this one marks the beginning of my interest in AI. In fact, I made this from my own face. My early attempts at integrating AI, aw, isn't that adorable, were one moment primitive, the next insanely chaotic. But eventually, I think I got a feel for it. Whether the idea was to illustrate some new developments in the field of generative AI itself, or I had in mind a more traditional topic. All right, so maybe sometimes I got carried away, drifted too far afield, but I dare say that's the point. See, AI is equal parts tool and inspiration. It allows you to take a basic design and customize it to fit a theme. The bots, as it were, aren't here to replace your efforts, but rather to augment them. And with their help, you can spend less time on the tedious grunt work and more time on the freewheeling thrill of the creative process itself, which, unless I'm very much mistaken, is the reason we got into this business in the first place. So I figured today, I'd show you how I created one of these, starting with nothing but some basic illustrator artwork and then adding one photographic image after another using generative fill inside Photoshop. And if you do it right, a little text is all it takes to tie it all together. So here we are inside Photoshop, looking at that unadorned, absolutely original seal of me. Come to think of it, I don't like it for a couple of reasons. First of all, this text wrapped all the way around a circle. Hard to read, right? Easy to miss typos as well. Further impairing the legibility is this seal smack dab in the middle of things, where you'd expect type to be, which is why I divided the type into two objects, top and bottom, and I changed it to reflect the topic of the week. The other problem is the incessant repetition of my name. After a while, we get it, right? Which is why I replaced that central area with the software at hand, which is Photoshop. Now, if you're remotely interested in how I went about masking this Photoshop icon inside this zigzag pattern that comes to us from Illustrator without so much as a clipping group, and how I created these curving symmetrical lightning bolts, then check out my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. Now, what we're seeing is fine insofar as it goes, but I really want to visually show off the, the effect that I'm hoping to create, like so. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to blend lightning along with clouds, which is what we're doing here. Big difference this time around. We're going to rely exclusively on generative fill. Why? Because generative fill gives us a lot more control over the composition of, in this case, specifically the lightning, because we want the lightning to radiate outward from the seal as opposed to downward from and to some clouds. And so here's how that works. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and turn everybody off. That way we're just seeing this white background, nothing more, I'll zoom out just a little bit. Now, I think we think of generative fill as something that you use on an existing photograph. Here, we're gonna use it from scratch. But notice down here in the taskbar, we're not seeing generative fill. What you have to do is press Control A, Command A on the Mac to select everything. Then you can click generative fill and then I'll just enter storm clouds because that's what I'm looking for and press the enter key. Now you do need a live active internet connection so that Photoshop can communicate with Firefly on the fly. But a moment later, you will see three different variations. You can click through them down here in the taskbar if you want to. Now notice in this first case, I have a lot of ground actually. You could request that the ground go away. It's not gonna work out that well. Or you could just scale this image so that the ground is outside the canvas. In my case, however, I do have a good looking image right here. Let's say this is the one I like. And so what I'll do is increase its contrast because this is just not going to work out. We want something very dramatic. 
for our lightning. And so first thing I'm gonna do is select that layer mask. And that, that's just a vestige, a leftover from the selection outline. You don't need it. So select it, press the backspace key to get rid of it unless you wanna you know, have a bunch of garbage in your layers panel, up to you. And then notice this generative fill layer is a smart object. So you can apply editable things to it, such as a smart adjustment by going to the image menu, choosing adjustment, and then choosing levels is what I recommend. Now notice this histogram right here. You wanna go ahead and drag the black and white slider triangles to the beginning and end of the histogram like so, just to give it as much contrast as possible. Then click on that central gamma value and press shift down arrow in order to make that sky very dark. Darker the better. That might be a little bit too dark. So let's go with 0 0.4. It's gonna vary in your case. Depends on the clouds that generative fill came up with. Now click OK, and we now have some storing clouds. We also have this very useless filter uh, uh, mask right here. And so I'll right click on it and choose delete filter mask. Don't want it, want to keep things clean and tidy. Now I have a couple more lightning layers already set up in advance. We'll come to them in a moment. That's just to expedite this process, but let's see how to create one of those. First thing you wanna do is make them emanate outward from the seal. And so you need to not just create them. You can't do just a, a select all like we do with the clouds and do some lightning because it's gonna come down from the sky like lightning does. You want it to go outward from the seal. So you need to select the seal by pressing the control key or the command key on the Mac and and clicking on that seal thumbnail here inside the layers panel. Notice that loads that selection outline like so. That is what we want. Now turn those guys off. And that way we're not affecting the composition of the lightning fill, the lightning generative fill that we're about to create with anything else. We're not polluting it, in other words. Now we don't want to fill the circle. We want to fill the area outside the circle. But the first thing you want to do is tuck that circle in because right now it's really tight to the seal you want to tuck it in so that we don't have any extra edge because what photoshop does is it fudges the edge which is tedious in my opinion but it does happen so you want to click on this brush icon and choose contract selection to move the edges inward and i suggest in this case based on experience contracting it by 30 pixels click ok moves it in, we get a smaller circle. Now you want to invert it by clicking on this invert selection icon right there. So we're selecting the area outside of the seal and now click generative fill. And I've come up with a prompt in advance in this case, lightning emanating outward in concentric circles. Did you get that? I'll say it again. Lightning emanating outward in concentric circles. Now this just happens to work. And what's great is once you come up with a prompt that gives you desirable results, you may want to stick with it. Notice, isn't that brilliant? That's awesome. And every time it's gonna be different. Notice we have three variations. I'm clicking through them here in the properties panel, but I like that first one the best. I think that looks absolutely delightful. And so now what we wanna do is, first of all, that filter mask. Again, it's not doing you any good anymore. That was just the original. Notice if I click on it and I get rid of it, nothing changed on screen. That's just a leftover. It's a vestige from the original selection outline. A little kind of dirty secret associated with, with generative fill. Now turn on the seal just so we can see it's a tight fit. So that looks good. We don't have any white around the edge. And now what you can do is turn on the storm clouds. Now you want to blend with the storm clouds, right? By first changing the blend mode right here to screen. That's gonna work out brilliantly. That keeps the bright lightning bolts and drops away the dark background. It doesn't drop away enough of the dark background, however. So you need to double click on the thumbnail. And you can do that with a generative fill layer. That's gonna bring up the layer style dialog box. And then as we saw a couple of weeks ago, our friends, in this case, our current layer and underlying layer. Now you wanna drop away the dark stuff from the current layer, from the lightning layer. So go ahead and take this black slider and drag it over. Notice how that dark stuff is dropping away. And so in my case, if I bring this up to, let's say just 140 is a good place to start where this is concerned. Anything 140 with a luminous level of 140 or darker is going to drop out, but we're gonna get harsh transitions, which is why we have a little cleft inside this triangle. To take advantage of it, you press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac. And what I like to do is drag these guys away. Notice Alt Option dragging moves one half of the triangle independently of the other. And I like to take it, I don't know, like 60 farther 
down and then 60 farther up from that point I found in the first place. I don't know. That's just a general rule of thumb. Just play with it until you like what you see. And what I want to do is just make that lightning not brittle. I, I want it to kind of be soft, but I also want it to be nice and sharp. So crisp is what I'm looking for, but not jagged. And then if you want the clouds to poke through as well, like notice these light clouds in the upper left region, then you would take the underlying layer slider. That's what it's about is the layer underneath, which is clouds and drag the white slider over and notice how that's going to force through those bright clouds and then press the option key on the Mac, the old key and the PC and drag the two halves of the slider apart so that we're creating some softness, a little bit of drop off where the transition is concerned. And so if you really want to see what's going on, this would have to be farther down the white triangles would, but I don't want that much cloud showing through. So I'll drag these guys back a little bit and then I'll click. Okay. Now what we want is more lightning. And so I showed you just a moment ago how I've got more lightning right there. But let's say you want to create one of those all by yourself. Why then you need to just repeat the steps we just did. So go ahead and turn everything off again. So we're not polluting the lightning. Go ahead and load that seal right there. We don't need the original seal. Get rid of that. That's a leftover. That's that original seal of Deke. We don't want that. Press the control key, command key on the Mac and click on this seal to load it as a selection outline. Click on the brush. So same thing we did before. Choose contract selection. You can take it even higher if you want to. Con contract by 40 pixels. Take it that much farther in. So we, we have even more wiggle room. And then you want to click on invert selection right there. And now what you want to do is click generate to fill and then paste in that same prompt and click generate. Now you can experiment with the prompt, especially if it didn't get you the results you wanted to. You could say spokes of lightning radiating outward. You could try all kinds of things, but I just happen to know this one works pretty well. And then you can go ahead and select the one you think you might like. But here, here's the trick, just go ahead and select one. Doesn't matter which one. Get rid of that stupid layer mask. It's not doing us any good. Yes, it's stupid. And then we want to apply the, 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 the same blending settings that we applied just a moment ago, but we don't have to go through all those steps again. We don't want to anyway. So I'll turn, I'll turn on all those layers. Notice we can't see through the new lightning layer that's at the top of the stack. So what you need to do is right click on that double square. Let me show you that again. See that double square icon right there? Right click on it and choose copy layer style. And that will copy all the stuff. It copy screen and the current and underlying layer uh, settings. And then right click on this new layer and choose paste layer style. And they'll paste all the stuff that we just applied a moment ago. Now that looks like a cacophony of lightning. It looks like a little bit too much, which is why, hey, try a different variation on the fly. You can do that. So everything that we're doing here is super editable, super malleable as well. Now, what I'd like to do, I'm going to turn the seal back on and I'm going to turn the Photoshop layer on as well so that we just have all of the seal. I want actually a little bit of lightning origin going on around the seal. So I'm going to select the seal layer right there. Click on the FX icon and choose outer glow. What you apply in the way of outer glow settings, that's totally up to you. I went with white, blend mode screen. It could be normal for all that. It doesn't matter when you're working with white. Opacity is cranked up to 100%, and I took the size up to 50. I could take it even higher. That's a little bit too much, though, don't you think? So I'll take it down. 68, that's great. Click OK to accept that change. So we just have a bit of brightness around the seal, so it looks like that's where the lightning is coming from. And finally, what I want to do is I want to kind of colorize the composition. Notice that in the final version right here, I have it uh, set to a complementary color. That is, it's a color complement to the logo itself. And to pull that off, I'll just go ahead and switch to the composition we're working on. Click on that top lightning layer right there. Click on the black white icon down here at the bottom of the layers panel and choose solid color. Solid color is a great way to colorize a lot of layers at a time. And then it's black, that's not what I want. And so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and click 
on the PS right there. And that loads that. And you can see we, we've now got all those color values, hue, saturation, brightness. I'm going to crank the saturation up to its maximum, 100%. And I'm going to take the brightness down to 50. This is perfect for colorization purposes. Don't worry about the hue yet. Click OK. And now change the, col the screen blend mode, that is, to color is what I'm looking for. And that way we're colorizing all the layers below. Problem is we don't want to colorize with blue. That's not all that different than what we had before. We want to colorize with a complementary color. So I'll double click on this guy. And then you take the hue value. If it's less than 180 degrees, 180, you add 180 to it because hue is measured on a circle, 360 degrees altogether. This is greater than 180. So we'll take that value and subtract 180 from it like minus 180, that's all I'm entering. And I get 25 degrees, that gets me a complementary color of orange. I want it to be a little redder, so I'll take that value down to 20 degrees like so, click OK, and we end up with this exciting effect right here. One more change I wanna make, I'm gonna select the seal and shift click on the Photoshop icon because I don't want them to be upright like this. I want them to be at kind of an angle. So I'll go up to the edit menu and choose free transform is what I'm looking for. And now I will click in this value. This is the rotate value right here. I'll select it and I'll just change it to seven. That's gonna work. You can try anything you want. And then I'll press the enter key a couple of times. It looks all jagged, but because these are vector-based layers, as soon as you accept the change, everything will be nice and smooth. Now you are gonna get a different result every single time. So this is what I had before. And this is what I have now. Every single layer is editable. Everything's random because we're working with generative fill. So you're always going to get a different result. So what do you think? Can you imagine a few ways that you might regularly update a piece of artwork using AI? If so, comment. If not, comment. And then like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Don't forget to join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And to see still more of my weekly takes on the seal of deke, go to deke.com and subscribe to my newsletter. Letter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.